Childhood is a wonderful time in our lives. Somehow, the years between 10 and 20 resonate with us more and more the older we get, and it seems like no matter how far we get from our formative years, the movies that stood out to us then are beginning to take on deeper and more nostalgic meaning that remind us of the magic of our youth and why it was so special. And today, we're gonna revisit possibly one of the most nostalgic films for this particular moviegoer, Richard Donner's 1985 coming-of-age masterpiece, The Goonies. Kind of like us, Mike. The Goonies. Yeah, I'm not a reject. On the surface, The Goonies is a simple tale of seven suburban teenagers who find themselves invested in a city-wide treasure hunt to save their home from being sold to the town's richest business mogul. But between the charming characteristics of each kid and the larger-than-life situations that they overcome, there's hidden subtext that is much more complex. It's a story that relies heavily on the audience's perception of the main cast and how much they buy into each one's motivation. And maybe I'm crazy, but I believe that what Richard Donner created says more about himself and more about childhood than we could have possibly imagined. This was my dream, my wish, and it didn't come true, so I'm taking it back. Now, this movie isn't one that's commonly overanalyzed, and there's no shortage of enjoyment to be gleaned from just the surface of what this movie is. But just like One-Eyed Willie's loot, the deeper you dig, the more you ultimately find. And today, we are going to revisit this 80s classic as well as take a good hard look at the filmmakers involved and try to snuff out the true meaning of The Goonies, and what it can tell us about our childhood fears and anxieties. So grab your Canadian tuxedo and don't forget your fastest bike, because we are about to determine once and for all, what is The Goonies really about? Welcome to Astoria, Oregon, a town not so far from where I was born and raised. Oh, no, is that why I like this movie so much? It, it doesn't matter. Astoria is a coastal Oregon town where the hilly streets and afternoon fog are seemingly floating alongside the coast. It's a cozy town, the kind of place we all wish we grew up in. And it's home to Mikey Walsh, an asthmatic 13-year-old kid who loves where he lives and, even more so, loves his friends. A ragtag group of local kids who call themselves the Goonies. On a stormy autumn afternoon, Mikey and his family find themselves packing up their belongings and preparing to move away, as their house is being sold and torn down to make way for more lucrative opportunities for the town's country club. While Mikey and his friends are exploring the attic, they stumble across a treasure map that confirms the truth about one of the town's most famous legends the lost treasure of a pirate named One-Eyed Willie, who supposedly got his ship trapped in a cave on the Oregon coast and left behind millions of dollars in stolen treasure. One-Eyed Willie! Yeah, he was the most famous pirate in his time! My dad told me all about him once! The group decides that in order to save their home and their friendships, they're gonna have to follow the map through to the finish and solve the mystery of Willie's hidden treasure. Along the way, they are in for a life-changing experience as they face their deepest fears, a local crime family who also wants the treasure, and an entire movie's worth of exciting and challenging adventures. On the surface, it's a film about a charming group of kids who go on a grand treasure hunt and crack some jokes along the way. This movie has an innocence to it that made it a good family movie growing up, but an incredibly comforting watch as an adult. And as you all know by now, I had to understand why this movie seems equally as impactful now as it did when we were kids. Oh, it is the most difficult thing I ever thought I was going to get into. I never anticipated what it was going to be like. Because individually, they're wonderful, they're nuts, they're, uh, they're the warmest, craziest little things that have come into my life. But in a composite form, you get them all together and it's mind-blowing. And yet, it's probably the most gratifying experience because there's an odd sort of a way. Uh, a lot of their energy and excitement is rubbing off on me. And uh, it's, it's very, very, very gratifying. I, I just think there's, there's not looking at it and saying I want one particular thing. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all delicious. It's all uh, ice cream dessert for me. They're all, uh, every scene seems to be wonderful. I don't like the scenes with the adults. 
Usually, I'd start by breaking down a brief history of the wide range of theories that may help us discover the meaning of this movie, but in this case, we're kind of exploring unknown territory, as this isn't a film that typically gets speculated on in this way. But you know what? I think that gives us a chance to be completely objective here and look at this movie with uninfluenced eyes. Minus the nostalgia goggles, of course. And to start, I'm going to employ a simple method to discover this movie's true meaning. I'm just gonna watch it over and over again and study its filmmakers until I can look myself in the mirror and say with 100% confidence that I am a Goonie. Andy! You Goonie! So, this movie was directed by legendary filmmaker Richard Donner. Donner is best known for bringing Superman to the big screen with Christopher Reeve in 1978's Superman the Movie. And of course he made Lethal Weapon, The Omen, and who could forget the iconic retelling of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Scrooged. Well, I am happy with the path that I've chosen, you little bitch! In fact, I couldn't be happier! Donner grew up in New York and was raised around movies, as his grandfather owned a movie theater where Donner spent time as a child. And Donner was also a soldier in the U.S. Navy at a very early age before moving to Los Angeles to pursue an acting career. Now, why is any of this important? Well, most of us can relate to what it's like to leave home once we become adults. There's an optimism about pursuing your own life, and also this bittersweet melancholy that feels like the ending of something. And that feeling does seem to be the exact thing that Mikey isn't ready to face in The Goonies. He's happy with his childhood and isn't looking forward to the ending of that chapter. And that, I think, is Mikey's ultimate motivation. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. I also need to mention that this movie's screenplay was written by Chris Columbus, who you know as the director of Home Alone and Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone both iconic movies in their own right. Columbus is a writer that knows exactly how to channel his inner child. He wrote these characters to reflect kids that he knew growing up, but also that resonate with children of the 1980s. Everyone had a friend who was too confident for their own good and would run their mouth just to hear themselves talk, like mouth. Siempre hay que sabrar las drogas. And let's be honest, as much as I wanted to be Mikey growing up, I was probably more like Chunk. Come on! I learned it from Dick Donner a little bit when Richard Donner was doing Goonies, how he worked with the kids. He became one of the kids himself. And I thought, that's a good way to work with kids. So it was really Dick who inspired me um, and, and sort of taught me. Now, the characters also tell us a fair amount about what this movie is really saying. There are seven Goonies in total. Well, eight, if you count Sloth. And it seems like each character could be summarized into two or three character traits each. Like Data is ambitious but clumsy. Mouth is loud and quick-witted. Chunk likes to eat and tell bullshit stories. And Bran is angsty and horny. And then there's Andy and Steph, who are a classic 80s duo with one being a popular cheerleader and the other one being a non-conformist hardass. I'm Team Steph, by the way. She's great. And we all know Mikey is, of course, the everyman main character. You guys, just what if this map can lead to one-eyed Willie's rich stuff? And while we're on the topic of characters, we also have the villains of the piece, the Fratellis. A mother and her two sons who are willing to steal and even murder for their shot at Willie's treasure. These three are actually pretty iconic as well. You have Mama Fratelli, who is a fully jaded and cold woman to her kids. Then there's Jake Fratelli, the oldest brother who thinks he's superior to his younger brother, Francis. Francis is cruel like his mom and brother, but he's also sensitive and seemingly the most afraid of the antics that they find themselves in. And of course, the secondary villain in this movie is Mr. Perkis, played by Kurt Hansen. And he's a capitalist, rich prick who is willing to tear down his community's homes in order to expand his country club. Is your mommy here? No, sir, actually, she's not at the market buying pampers for all us kids. So, what does all of this say about the movie and its true meaning? Well, here's my theory. What if The Goonies is really about Chris Columbus and Richard Donner's individual struggles with facing adulthood? Think about it. The adults are almost all assholes in this movie. Kids suck. Apart from some of the parents, the Fratellis and Mr. Perkis are everything we don't want to become when we're kids facing adulthood. 
We don't want to be jaded. We don't want to be disliked by our community. We don't want to feel numb to the world like they do. We'd rather take the path of most resistance and hang on to our confidence, our love for simple pleasures like ice cream, our desire to innovate and be creative, and most importantly, we want to hang on for dear life to our sense of wonder. We're just making an ordinary adventure here, ordinary fantasy. Nothing extraordinary happens in this picture at all. These kids are all kind of like friends. They're all sort of outcasts. They need each other because the uh, more popular kids don't want anything to do with them. And they get bored one day and they have the most extraordinary adventure that any adult could possibly imagine. And come on, did you think I wasn't gonna bring the booby traps into this theory? Give me a break. Booby traps! That's what I said, Sam! Setting booby traps in case of anybody's following us! Throughout the team's hunt for the treasure, they face a slew of rigs and traps that were set up by One-Eyed Willie and his crew to keep anyone seeking their riches far away. We're talking about a skeleton bone piano that knows if you play the right song to gain passage, a pitfall to a cold and spiky grave, and even a rigged up pirate ship that would behead anyone brave enough to steal from Willie's table. And to overcome these traps, the kids and their unique traits will come into play. Data's creative inventions, while underdeveloped, help the kids multiple times. Chunk's kindness and mutual love for food help the team gain some muscle when they get sloth. Mouth's ability to translate Spanish is what makes the whole hunt possible, and of course Mikey's bravery leads the whole group. Sure, this could be a stretch, but seeing as it's explained in the movie that at least one other person had tried and failed to find the treasure, an adult named Chester Copperpot, it seems like the reason that the adults can't do it, but some brave little kids can, is because it requires the imagination of a child to go on such a wonderful journey. It's pretty amazing after 25 years that the passion for the movie in terms of the fans has just continued to grow. And I think it's pretty, for me, the answer of why that has happened is very, it's very clear. The movie was made with love from top to bottom. Everybody, it represented something very special to everyone at the time that it was made. Even, even Dick Donner, who is uh, barrel chested and, and has so many things that he does, he really, in an important special part of his life, this meant something to him. And he, he you know, from Dave Grusin, who did the music, all of the actors, you know, the cinematographer, everybody puts their passion into it. And I think when you do that and you get a little bit lucky, I mean, I think that the style of movie that they made was just almost at the end of the way that kind of movie was made. And I, I think it's, it just, it struck a, it struck a chord. If you're still not convinced about my theory, let's look at Chris Columbus. He grew up a fan of the arts, similar to Donner, and may even have a similar attitude towards facing adulthood. See, Columbus went to film school in New York, and he was writing a nice little scholarship for his talent. The problem is, one semester, he forgot to renew that scholarship and he was forced to take a dead-end night shift at a factory in order to pay for school. He was a starry-eyed, creative kid who was forced to confront the torture of adulthood before he expected or was ready to. He of course stayed in school and worked on screenplays between work and studying, which he's gone on record saying, quote, saved his life. It's as if the creativity and ambition and wonder of his youth is what saved him from the booby traps that are life's incidental curveballs. See? I told you! We can't forget to take into account the movie's third act, where the kids and the Fratellis duke it out for the treasure. While the Goonies get there first and load up on priceless goods, the Fratellis gain on them and rob the kids before making them walk the plank. Luckily, Sloth and Chunk show up to help save the day, and... Wait a minute, what does Sloth have to do with anything? Sloth is the youngest Fratelli, who's been chained to the wall in his basement for years due to his physical disfigurement and lack of control over his emotions. He's basically superhuman and adorably lovable at the same time. When Chunk meets him, Sloth is being horribly mistreated by his own family. But Chunk gives him a baby Ruth and talks to him and soon realizes that while the kids were afraid of him at first, he's nothing more than another brave goonie. Rocky Road? <laughs> so, the adults treat him like shit for being different, but the kids embrace him for that very difference. And in the end, who wins? The kids. 
the open-minded and pure-hearted characters that want to build up their friends no matter who or what they are. Maybe this really means that it's easier to make friends as a kid than it is as an adult. Or maybe it's something about embracing the ugly parts of yourself and finding the strength and beauty that it can bring you. Something that gets increasingly hard to do as you become an adult. I would really like the house clean when they tear it down. And while the kids don't end up with all the treasure, they get just enough to save their homes and keep the Goonies together for a little while longer. So, at the end of the day, the Goonies taught me that there is nothing more important, nothing more imperative, than staying close to your inner child and always remembering that growing up doesn't have to mean growing out of your sense of adventure. But mostly, this movie taught me that Goonies never say die. It all starts here.